Bum, ba, da, dum. Howdy, y'all. Banjo Ben here with BanjoBenClark.com. We're going to learn a, well, actually two solos to just a closer walk with E on guitar in the key of D. The first one's going to be a pretty straight ahead basic melody version, and then we're going to get a little swingy with it, and we're going to bring in some other notes and some other ideas and some triplets and going up the neck a little bit and some other fun things that I think will give you a lot of ideas for how to approach this song and songs like it. If you're watching somewhere else besides BanjoBenClark.com, I'd love to have you on board the site where you can become a Gold Peak member, get access to this lesson, hundreds of other great ones just like it. Let's dive right in. The guitar I'm using today is the Yamaha FG830, and it's brand new, as you can see. I've still got the mini pearl tag on it. Brand new out of the box. Um, I'm Honored to be a Yamaha dealer at my general store, and this is just one of the great Yamaha models that we carry, and they're set up like a dream whenever you receive them. Uh, so I'd be honored if you check them out on the store's website. Now, when we talk about just a closer walk with the, um, we've got a melody that's pretty straightforward and has a lot of space in it, which works really well whenever we're wanting to create a more robust solo, which we will do in just a moment. But I want to take the basic solo and not only teach you the melody, but start to talk about some improvisation right from the start and some easy ways that you and I can begin to improvise and stretch out a little bit without getting too complicated, without getting very deep in the theoretical woods. Let's look at the basic melody. We're in the key of D here. I only have a few chords in my arrangement. I have the standard 1, 4, and 5, which is D, A, and G. And then we are going to do a... G sharp diminished, and I'll talk about how to play that later on when we talk about the rhythm. But I'm going to start out with the melody right here on the second fret of the G string. We've got four beats per measure, so we're going to hold that three beats. One, two, three, four. You'll notice that I'll often play this fourth fret on the G string for that B note rather than play an open B string. Why would I do that? Well, the main reason is because I want to control how long that string and that note rings. So if I use an open string, it can ring out longer than I want to. And I may not want it to do that. So if I want to control it, I can fret it instead. Now look right there, measure five. We've got that open third string that's going to ring out for a measure and a half. Actually, it's two whole measures, but I'm going to cut it a little short. And at the end of this line, we're going to do a simple little walk up. That's not truthfully part of the melody, but it's just going to fill in some of the space. Climbing right up to seventh measure. And again, I can't help but add a little bit of flair that's outside of the basic melody here, even to start just because it is so, uh, the melody is so straight up and so um, kind of plain without it. We've got another walk up at the end of that line so that this whole line sounds like this. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Third line. Pretty standard there. Again, the last measure of this line, we're going to walk down a little bit, even though that's not technically part of the melody. And as we get to the last line of the basic melody. And then the last measure of that line, what you're seeing there is the walk up for the more jazzy version that we'll look at in just a little while. Okay, here's what I want to do with you. Let's play through this whole basic melody slowly together. And then I want to talk about some very, I would say, elementary ways that we can begin to improvise that are a lot of fun. So let's try it from the start, me and you. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three. Okay, 
that's fun. And remember, you can repeat that. You can slow down the video. You can speed it up, whether you're watching this on YouTube or here on the website as a Gold Pick member. Let's try an, an idea or two for how to begin to improvise even right now. One of the ways that I can improvise is just by adjusting the timing of the notes that I play. We don't even have to think about other notes. So let's say that we've gotten this basic version under our fingers, maybe even memorize how it's supposed to sound and where we can find it on our neck, or even read the tab if you must. We're going to get off that tab as soon as possible, though. Um, what I can do is begin to play some of the notes maybe a little sooner than what they would fall normally, or maybe even a little later. So I'm going to play through it with you again. Um, maybe you just want to listen this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to push the notes a little bit. What do I mean by that? I mean that I'm going to play the notes a little sooner than what you might normally would expect to hear them. One of the easiest ways to do that is on the fourth beat of the measures and even the first beat. So let's just look at the first line and I'll give you a demonstration and then we'll play it um, all the way through and you can hear what I'm talking about. So we're starting. So instead of waiting for the downbeat on that open third string, we could play it at the end of the second measure. It would sound something like this. You hear how I've pushed it? The next line, we can do the same thing. Hear how I'm kind of pushing ahead with the melody? The next line, look at measure 11. So I'm grabbing those melody notes and I'm scooting them ahead just a little bit. The trick there is that we need to make sure and not to rush, not to skip any beats. We can take the notes that we're going to play and we can play them a little sooner than what folks might expect to hear them, but we have to let them ring longer so that we don't lose any beats as we're playing. And that's the key there. So um, it really helps to do it with a uh, rhythm track, which you have here on the website if you're a Gold Pit member, you can download that and practice along with that. Let me just play through this basic melody one more time, and I'm just going to adjust the timing a little bit. So you'll see the tab as written, but see if you can detect whenever I'm getting off on the timing. I'm not going to play any extra notes. I'm just going to move them around a little bit. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. Again, I haven't adjusted any of the actual notes. I haven't added any notes. What I've done is adjusted them in time. And that's a big part of our improvisation is just taking the notes that people are expecting to hear and play them either a little sooner or a little later than what they might expect. Okay. Now, in the next video segment, we're going to learn this more advanced version. It's got a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of room to explore other ideas as well, which we'll talk about. If you're watching as a Go Pick member here on the website... Just click on the next video segment. If you're watching somewhere else, you can come join me at BanjoBenClark.com. I'd be honored to have you on board.